today we are going to talk about something that I've been asked a few times and I figured I would just make a video on it because hopefully it'll be helpful and that topic is how do you find your style or how did you get your style or how do I find my own style etc basically anything that has to do with creating a style like a lot of really awesome artists on Instagram that you come across they have like a lot of them have a very distinct looking style sometimes you can see art just around on social media and immediately be like I know exactly who that belongs to because they have such a distinct look I feel like I don't know if I'm just kind of tooting my own horn but I feel like I have a pretty distinct style but it is very inspired by a lot of different things and I get asked all the time on how I developed my look and everything and I just kind of want to talk about it a little bit and then we can go into how to explore developing a style first off before we do anything I want to explain a little bit about styles and some I don't know if they're misconceptions but just things that I feel like people think about in regards to style and I just want to address it a little bit style is like I find it like a very fluid thing for artists in the sense that it will change over time your style will constantly shift and change and look drastically different even from like what you had beforehand to what you have now to what you have in the future i'll show examples of how my style has changed over the years but i think sometimes younger artists go into this mentality of creating your own style quote unquote by being like i have to come up with a look and that's going to be my look for the rest of my life <laughs> and i don't think that's the case i mean you can even look at famous artists they all have different kind of eras and vibes that they go through throughout their years like a famous one is Picasso who had his blue period and his cubic period but then there's also earlier times where he drew and painted in realism like realistic stuff so people can have styles that change and shift throughout their life so I just wanted to address that first and say that currently this is my style, currently this is the stuff that inspires my style, but my style has shifted and changed and it will continue to shift and change and I don't think that we should think too hard on it as in like, I have to come up with a distinct look. I have to come up with something that I know is like, this is my own. And I think it should be more like, this is how I enjoy drawing <laughs> and I'm going to continue drawing in that and then if something comes along and inspires me maybe I'll explore that so we're also going to talk about the difference between creating a style quote-unquote stealing like an artist which is a phrase that is common in the art world and also just straight plagiarizing or copying and how to avoid that last one so let's just jump right into it then so I'm sure you've heard me say this 50 billion times in all my other videos, but I always start out with references and me personally, the best way I get references is from Pinterest. I make a ton of boards. As you can see here, I have just like art that I like, that inspires me, that I think is pretty from all different decades, from different painting styles, everything. Just tons of different stuff that I like and I will look back on that type of stuff sometimes especially when I'm feeling uninspired I also have a another board called character design inspo which is also basically the same thing just art that I like cute characters fun design good shapes cool patterns just stuff that I like things that inspire me and that's I think the biggest thing when you're trying to establish a style is just collect all of the artwork that you like. Doesn't matter if it's old, new, whatever, all of your favorite artwork, just collect it all and just look through it and see what really jumps out to you. 
I have a whole entire thing on just Chuck Jones. I really like how he draws his characters right now. I'm in a really big Chuck Jones vibe, which you can probably tell by looking at my work. But I really like how he does his characters, so I have a board for that that I can look at specifically. So yeah, overall, just collecting all of your favorite stuff, going through, looking at everything, and then just like picking out the stuff that stands out to you. Like your favorite pieces out of those, or the things that you're like, oh, I wish I could draw like this. I wanted to show here an example of all of the things that inspire me or have inspired me in the past. I have examples of just everything. Um, I have George Petty, who's my favorite pinup artist. I absolutely love how he draws legs, and I really, really wanted to emulate that into my work. I really love the Centaurettes from Fantasia. That was like a really big inspiration for me from a young age. Big fan of Chuck Jones, like I said. Love how he drew this face specifically <laughs> from this cat from uh, a gay purry, which was a cartoon from the 1960s. I love that face and you can see that I incorporated it in my work. Love Katie Keen pinup stuff. I like old illustrations from the 50s and 60s, like ads and stuff. I like how they were printed. So I like to emulate that kind of vintage print style in my work. I like Shane Glines. I love the way that he has this kind of like modern retro vibe and his sharp lines with like the softer lines inside. I really like these illustrations by, I think his name is Hume or whom. Um, he was an, a cartoonist from the 50s. Oliver Hurst is another fantastic vintage artist, illustrator. He has great line of action. You can see I'm showing you how easy it is to notice that line. Down here is stuff that inspired me at a young age. Goofy Movie, Little Nemo in Slumberland, Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, well anything Studio Ghibli, The Last Unicorn. There's just a lot that inspired my work even at a young age, this kind of like pretty magical fun retro -y vibe and I wanted to just show quickly from my most recent piece that you can see how much I pulled from all of these different things I have the legs kind of similar to George Petty I have the face similar to this cat I have this like pinup vibe. I have the treatment from this like 50s illustration. These like softer lines on the inside like Shane Glines. A nice line of action like Oliver Hurst. And that's the essential concept of stealing like an artist, which is taking tiny bits and pieces from your favorite art and favorite artists and compiling them into one. But you're just taking small pieces, just enough so that you're not completely copying somebody else's style more so just being like I like how this person draws eyes I like how this person draws hair I like how this person draws legs I like how this person draws hands you can go down to I like how this person draws fingers <laughs> so yeah you just kind of steal like an artist uh, meaning like all of the tiny little stuff and compiling it into one illustration so I wanted to show here just really quickly how much my style has changed throughout the years. This is from like 2003 or four to essentially now, but you can see how I really kind of explored different looks, very cartoony, more realistic, uh, different coloring styles. I just kind of explored a bunch of things to find what I liked and what kind of fit with how I felt like drawing at the time versus like, you know, I keep showing this, but this is like my most, most recent piece. So let's jump in and create a brand new style, essentially. I'm gonna kind of show you my thought process. I went ahead and pulled a bunch of art styles that I have been really interested in lately that are kind of different than my normal vibe in the sense that like this leans more anime, like Japanese style from like the 60s and 70s and even 50s. I normally go more Western cartoony, um, even though I will say my foundation in drawing has been anime and got me into drawing, but I ended up diverting into more Western inspired stuff like earlier on. 
but we're going to embrace a more like shoujo vibe this time. So what I wanted to do first and what everybody should do first I recommend is just copying exactly the art style that you like because by copying it this is something that we learned in school called master copies. They're not meant to be sold or anything like that. This is just to teach your hand and learn how to draw in that illustration style or draw that character. You can use this for character design, for illustration, for, for you know, we did it in animation and everything. I recommend just straight copying the styles that you kind of want to emulate. Do a bunch of them, like a bunch of sketches of these because by doing a bunch of sketches, you're kind of training your hand, training your eye to draw in this new style because a lot of your natural style that you're going to work in is, is muscle memory. So you need to retrain your hand and retrain new muscle memory for a new style. Now we're not going to just copy this and say, okay, we're done. Like this is my new style that, cause that's obviously copying. So once you've done a lot of sketches and have gotten comfortable in this new style, you are going to jump into this new version where you're going to start meshing and melding. The way that I do this is I look at the art inspo and kind of translate it in my head of what I'm kind of going for, like the feel I'm going for. And it doesn't have to look exactly like the illustration. Actually, I don't want it to look exactly like it, but more inspired. I love the eyes from Junichi Nakahara. I noticed he draws his girls with wide set eyes and a very, very heavy upper lash line, as well as wispy eyelashes and very, very, very big irises. I also was pulling in the nose and tiny mouth from the typical shoujo manga style. And for the head, I really, really liked the way that Masako Watanabe draws like big hair and big heads. So I included that in my design. And then the body, I couldn't find the name of the artist at the top left, but I really have been digging this kind of straight legged, fatter calf, bigger feet vibe. So I wanted to do something like that. I also did a variation of the more slender legs and just messed around with some body shapes a little bit to see what I liked. But in the end, I kind of was feeling this bigger calf, bigger feet look. I also liked these thick legs from this 1920s ad. I like how they're straight down and then these little tiny heels. And I like these kind of bigger, thicker calves. As you can see here, I, I've, that's what I was kind of vibing with is this like thicker calf, thicker foot. I also wanted her legs to be really long. Like I wanted her body to be mostly legs <laughs> and I wanted her proportions to be big head, tiny torso really long legs and keep in mind these rules when you are creating your own style take note of the rules that you're setting in place for yourself for example my rules so far for this style are big feet thicker calves big hands thicker forearms tiny torso large head the face is sitting on the lower third well actually more like the bottom half of the head and she has a very, very thick, thick lash line, as well as a tiny nose and a tiny mouth. Also, it's okay to bring in other style influences even while you're working through this. For example, I was like, oh, I actually really want to do my hands similar to how Betty Boop, like her hands look. These kind of fat palms and tiny little pointy fingers. So that's what I incorporated in as her hands. I wanted them to also be a little larger as well so that they fit with the bigger feet. I also want to show an example of the proportions here. As you can see, tiny torso, really long legs, big head. The head is a little bigger than the torso. The legs are the longest part. The eyes and everything sit lower on the head. And I wanted to make sure that I implement these rules, even when 
you're making other variations off of your style. Now, an important thing to note is you want to avoid this kind of like same face syndrome, which is very easy to fall into, especially when you're establishing a new style. One of the best ways to do this is just out the gate, practice drawing different types of faces or different types of bodies using the same rules that you have just established for yourself. So for example, I asked myself, well, if this is my new style, what does a chubbier girl look like in this style, for example? So we implement the same rules. I want her calves to be bigger and thicker. I want her legs to be more uniform shape, large feet, bigger hands, thicker forearms, we're just gonna widen everything essentially. Just want her to still have a tiny torso. I made her chest bigger and I kept her face on the lower half of the head. I'm kind of using the same face right now because I wanted to focus more on the body to see how does this, does this still work in the style even when she's a bigger girl? And I think in this case, yes, it's translating for the most part. We could still do some modifications, but I wanted to at least see like, how can I make a different type of body using the same rules that I've established for myself. And in order to avoid same face syndrome, we also should practice drawing different types of facial features within the rules that we kind of set for ourselves. So the head shape maybe might be the same. We'll do like a smaller jaw area that widens out when we get to the skull, bigger ears, maybe making the nose wider, the lashes and the lash line is still the same, the irises are still the same, but thicker lips. Or maybe for this example, we do a different type of lip shape with no cupid's bow, but still the same size lips. For the eyes, we do more upturned, narrow eye, as opposed to like a circular eye, but still keep them wide set and have the same sort of thick lash line and lashes. That way they still kind of share the same rules, but with slight modifications to them. At this point, I'm just jumping into an illustration to show you kind of what I imagine the finalized image might look like. But I recommend when you're establishing a new style to really just do a lot of sketching, a lot of exploring and tweaking your design. At this point, get rid of your references because you don't want to rely on them too heavily and you want to make this your own. So the more you draw, the more your hand is going to naturally remove things or add things in and your style will slowly move from a mishmash of various looks into something that's all your own because your hand is kind of putting its own tweak on it, especially once you remove your references and you stop looking back at them and just kind of drawing from memory and drawing from the view and goal that you're trying to achieve. So that might mean your eyes get smaller, they might mean your eyes get bigger, it might mean your head gets smaller, it might mean the torso gets longer, it might mean the legs get shorter, it might mean the calves get wider, things will start to change and I think that that's okay and you want that to slowly change. Also keep in mind your line art and color treatment. I tend to go for like a thick line art. So this time I decided let's do like a very thin line art. So I kind of pulled this marker line and went in with like a very, very thin line art style. So just keep in mind that this is gonna shift and change the more you work with it and that's good. Just keep practicing and keep drawing and really working within this and explore other types of faces, explore other types of bodies, maybe even write out your rule list and go back to it when you're working on stuff. Your rule list can change too. You don't have to adhere to it. You can have your initial rule list and realize after drawing various characters for a while, like, oh, I don't do this anymore. I don't really need to focus on this rule. So. Yeah, I think the whole point also too is have fun in the style that you're exploring. Like if you find creating a type of style as just annoying and laborious and frustrating, maybe explore something else. You should really enjoy drawing in that and like want to go back and draw on it again. So I hope that this kind of helps. If you have any other questions down below, feel free to ask and I can answer them as best as I can. And yeah, let's look at the final completed image. Let me know if this
this was helpful at all. And if you want me to do something else like this again, I enjoyed kind of branching out and doing something completely different. I actually really like this style. I might do more in this <laughs> in the future. But yeah, let me know if you liked it. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer. And put on your favorite outfit, stop and smell some flowers, and have a piece of chocolate if you like chocolate. <laughs> and that's about it. Have a good rest of your day. Goodbye. Also, a quick note, the theme for the Sticker Tales Stationery Club for August is the Wild West. And here are the examples of things that you can get for both the Atomic tier and the Starburst tier. I send out stickers and stationery stuff every single month and the theme changes every month. <laughs> so if you want to sign up, make sure that you sign up now because I ship at the end of the month. Okay, goodbye.